Clara's file maker keeps us all together on track as a pack. Open fan maker, let it charm you. Welcome to Claris Engage 2020. You're joining us for the 25th anniversary of this conference, and we're thrilled to have you as a part of our celebrated Claris community of developers, customers, partners, media, and colleagues. As we honor our 25th conference anniversary, we also recognize the many firsts this year, including relaunching this conference, the event formerly known as DevCon, as Claris Engage. We're calling this event Engage because that's exactly what we hope you'll do. Engage with other developers, entrepreneurs, and panels, and those very special first-timers who don't identify as developers yet. You're attending not just the inaugural Engage event, but also our first virtual event, something we've never done before, which in 2020 seems about right. Right now, and on an unprecedented global scale, everyone is doing things they've never done before, in new ways, under new guidelines, done remotely. There is change everywhere. At Claris, adapting is what our platform does best. But working from home, staying at home, never leaving the home, it's been hard on everyone. At my house, and probably yours too, this adaptation has its ups and downs. I have two college kids who were more than ready to be out of the nest, end up right back at home with their eighth grade brother. Their only social outlet was sitting down at the dinner table every night with their mom and me. I'm pretty sure that wasn't how they planned to spend their spring semester in college. But we've made these changes to keep our families and communities safe, and it's refocused us on what's most important. In the past 15 months, before the pandemic shut down most travel, I had a chance to get out into our community and meet with many of you and learn about the exciting businesses and services you've built. I always came back to the office full of enthusiasm over the inspiring ways the platform is growing. That is even more true today. After many of you stopped what you're doing in order to build apps addressing the coronavirus pandemic. At Claris, we quickly realized our community was uniquely positioned to help. You'll remember in March, we put out the call for developers who could respond to COVID needs. Your level of response and the frontline solutions that were built in just days and weeks makes us all incredibly proud. Dr. Brian Fine created Percy MD, a mobile texting app to keep seniors with possible COVID at home instead of exposing them to more risk in crowded waiting rooms. After the London Ambulance Service realized they needed to stock critical protective gear in over 350 ambulances, our partner, Solus Digital, created an app in just weeks to track that stock and protect their EMTs. JoinTable, a collective of volunteers whose mission is to assist Claris developers in doing pro bono work for nonprofit organizations. These are just a small handful of the community members who stepped up Developers, partners, and customers stayed up all day and night building COVID response apps. All of us at Claris want to thank you for your incredible generosity, your response, and your ingenuity. Coming up a little later, you'll hear from longtime community member, my friend and Claris colleague, Andrew LaCates, celebrating over two decades with Claris, who was on the front lines of the COVID response team. As we celebrate our 25th conference milestone and look to the future, we recognize there is huge scarcity in the pool of available talent, while at the same time, the demand for developers grows. As a recent Wall Street Journal report highlighted, there's demand for over 500 million apps, but acknowledged only 50 million of them could be supported by existing IT. Compounding that demand gap, the journal reported only a modest increase in new computer science graduates each year over the prior decade. Who's going to develop all the software? Who's going to satisfy the demand for exploding mobile platforms, IoT, and AI? Who will that be? There's two ways to solve the tsunami of developer demand, and they both start with low code. You make existing professional developers more efficient by giving them faster, easier low-code tools, or you take citizen developers and help them create, solving their own business problems with low-code. 
Everything we do at Claris is focused on enabling all of you to meet this demand and drive your business. In support of that vision, look what we've accomplished this past year. We launched FileMaker 19 and Claris Connect. We standardized our software on Linux servers. We've opened our platform for developers to access tens of thousands of JavaScript libraries and introduced add-ons. This plug and play component also added value and opportunity for beginner problem solvers. These add-ons are promoted in our newly launched marketplace, backed up by a detailed marketplace roadmap to support our professional developers well into the future. Marketplace will have a dedicated section for educators, empowering teachers who need to create new and remote classroom solutions, satisfying an exploding demand for virtual learning tools. And we've integrated Apple's core ML in support of our vision for AI, signaling our future as an intelligent Claris experience. We envision persistent social engagement, where your first engagement pre-sale will generate a profile fed with recommendations for apps, learning paths, and add-ons. Your transition from interest to deployment will be seamless. These enhancements to data structures will be informed by AI, along with suggestions for those high friction workflows ripe for intelligent automation. The more we interact together, the more value we can add together. We are excited for this future of intelligent automation, ethically managed, and I can't wait for you to hear more from our product teams throughout Engage. There are many incredible businesses that have been built on the Claris platform. One of my favorites is a fun off-roading company, Shock Therapy, that was able to ditch piles of paper when they switched to Claris, allowing them more time for off-roading. Please meet Claris customer, Shock Therapy. I had no idea this was going to become this. This business started off as a way to help my wife. She couldn't ride in any of our UTVs or anything that we had, so we kind of dove into the shocks and tried everything we could do to make the car ride smooth and soft so that she could actually go on a ride, and she did. The personality of our company is enthusiastic because we're all enthusiasts in this market. We all own UTVs, we got into this business to try and make our personal cars ride better, and that's blossomed into something that most people in the industry want, need, and it's allowed us to grow. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, very serious though when it comes down to getting to our deadlines. Uh, we do anywhere from 10 to 13 cars a day. It's just, it's a constant, you know, go, go, go. <laughs> And what struck me when I started working with shock therapy was there was an overwhelming sense of uh, paper. <laughs> there was a lot of paper flying around everywhere. Constantly people needed to know what someone was told or was a customer called or did you file this or did you run that deposit? Where's the parts I needed? The process worked great for when you know it was just a few people, but as the company grows, the paper stacks just started growing and growing. Nobody, nobody really wants change. I mean, I know we do, but Deep down, you're like, ah, we've been so used to this paper system. I don't want digital. Uh, I, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be. I was one of the ones that was like, no, I don't want this system at all. But the more I used it, and I had it in front of me, and it was just, at, just clicking on everything. Like, hey, this is this person. This is. It, it was literally right. Th I had to do nothing. Now when I walk into the shop, I just see everybody on their iPads and they know exactly what to do and everybody's getting notified when, any, when major milestones are happening. And the neat part about Claris FileMaker is that we, we are able to take that attention to detail. We're able to work in an agile format where we can focus on solving one thing at a time and over time we're able to streamline the whole business. Gina, the operations manager, she put up with a lot. A year ago, it looked like a paper graveyard on her desk and now, you can breathe. We knew how amazing it was going to be. We knew how much it was going to cure for us. But we had no idea what it really was going to do once it was in place. And it's been 10 times better than we thought it was going to be even through that design process.
First, I'd like to start out by welcoming all of our Claris partners who represent nearly 1,400 organizations from all over the world and are dedicated to solving problems for their customers with Claris products. Our partners are vital to our strategy and a key component of our success. During last year's partner keynote, we talked about our ecosystem as one of the three pillars of our growth strategy. Our goal is to be the leader in our rapidly evolving space. And to reach our goal, we continue to make investments in new and existing partners. In fiscal year 2020, we grew in both the size of our community and the overall contribution of activities to help promote and strengthen the Claris brand and to drive your business and customer relationships. To meet the rising demand for Claris products, we put in a lot of effort toward attracting new partners. I'm thrilled to share that since last year, we have increased the number of new partners in our community by 55%. For those of you listening in, welcome to the community. We are fortunate to have you. We're attracting many organizations that want to broaden their reach and participate in digital transformation in more meaningful ways than ever before. These organizations are often joining us with expertise or specialization in vertical markets or emerging technologies such as IoT, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. One example of a recent addition is Fusion of Ideas. Initially, they engaged with us because of Claris Connect to help them build better brand experiences and integration programs for mobile device rollouts. They're a great example of the types of partner that we are attracting to our community. They focus intently on understanding their customers' business problems through an innovative mapping approach in order to scope and ultimately create a digital experience based on their unique needs through a combination of applications and integrations. This is just one example to illustrate the type of organizations that are betting on Claris products to help achieve their vision toward enablement of digital transformation for their clients. Not only have we grown our new partners, we have seen unbelievable participation from our existing community that have been with us through the years. These critical relationships have contributed to our joint goal of establishing ourselves as the leader in our category. Since the launch of our Advocacy Activity Program, we are much better able to track the impact of activities driven by Claris partners, including programs like workshops, web events, blog posts, and trainings. Since we launched the advocacy program in February of this year, Claris Partners have conducted over 200 events, resulting in over 12,000 attendees. Beyond advocacy, we're seeing broad adoption of Claris Connect within our partner base. Many of you have completed certification and are now expanding with a new portfolio of offerings into our joint base. And while our partners are investing in us, we're investing in them. Expect to see more resources available throughout the year to help facilitate sales and marketing work with aligned messaging around the Claris brand. These resources will ultimately help partners drive more demand for their solutions. Of particular importance, last year at Engage, Brad announced the Claris Marketplace. This marketplace is a first major step toward differentiating our ecosystem through the incredible universe of apps, templates, extensions, and training products powered by this community. Throughout the course of this year, the marketplace has grown to include nearly 400 amazing products made by our partners and has become one of our most visited pages on Claris.com. Stay tuned, we have more exciting news to come, but for now, I'll turn it back to Brad. As I've shared, we're driving change at Claris, broadening our brand, expanding our platform, and striving for excellence. The best part is, great people are attracted to our organization. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to two new executives key to our organization. These are tech veterans who've been in the trenches for decades. First, we welcome back Peter Nelson, formerly the engineering director of Bento, and now our VP of engineering at Claris. Peter brings with him not only bold vision, but more than 20 years experience leading product and engineering teams in Silicon Valley. You'll be hearing from Peter shortly. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Britta Meyer Rock as Claris's new VP of marketing. Britta is an accomplished marketing executive, and just like her name, her ideas for Claris are bold and strong. Her keen expertise is visible in every team interaction, and we're very lucky to have her. I'm happy to pass the virtual mic to Britta 
for you to get to know her and her marketing vision. Take it away, Britta. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much to Brett for that kind introduction. I'm Britta Meyer Rock, the new VP of Marketing at Claris, and I'm excited to be joining you today for Engage. While this is the first time for me and the first time in a virtual format, it does mark the 25th anniversary of this conference for all of you who make up the great Claris community. So much to be proud of. Congratulations. When I was introduced to Claris, I started to learn about the company's impressive success over three decades and the FileMaker platform, which has proven to be more relevant now than ever. I learned that tens of thousands of developers have been relying on FileMaker to solve problems in companies big and small around the globe and have been building successful businesses on top of it, creating a community unmatched in the industry. Eventually, when my new role was announced, my LinkedIn feed was flooded with welcome messages for many of you introducing yourselves and offering your support which seems to be what this community simply is all about. As you may know, in Germany, where I grew up, we are not really known for being overly soft and fuzzy, but I can tell you those messages warmed my heart. Thank you. To me, it is a privilege to be working with all of you and for you on elevating the Claris brand and your businesses that are built upon it. Today, I'd like to share our plans for the year ahead and introduce you to two select new programs we hope you'll find valuable. First, our Claris Academy, and second, the free FileMaker developer subscription for those hardest hit by the corona pandemic. One of our key priorities this year has been elevating education opportunities. As we all know, demand for skilled talent across our industry continues to rise sharply and we want to do our part to help problem solvers like you advance your skills, create job opportunities for your talents, and open doors for your success. As part of this ongoing effort, we launched Claris Academy, a free, personalized digital learning experience for students of all skill levels. With Claris Academy, for the first time, our members have access to modern tools and courses designed to develop and deepen these valuable skill sets in huge demand. Claris Academy serves as a foundation where soon you will find new plans, new courses and continuously added content. In fact, I expect many of you will find yourselves exploring the on-demand sessions that will be published to the Academy as part of our virtual Claris Engage experience. This year, of course, has marked terribly by the worsening of the pandemic outbreak and its devastating impact on all facets of life, including the job market. We heard from many of you who lost their jobs and are now seeking a new career path. To help those in need with this transition, we are now offering the FileMaker developer subscription free of charge to students and transitioning professionals alike. Our goal is to provide more job opportunities in a world that continues its digital workflow transformation in ways that have only been accelerated by COVID-19. As I shared with you, I knew when I joined Claris that this community was strong, incredibly collaborative and supportive of each other. We couldn't have known that a global pandemic, a crisis unlike anything we had ever seen before, could and would bring us even closer. The volunteer hours our developers donated to create solutions for urgent COVID response needs. The apps that were created in just days, which impacted thousands of lives. That's what shows me that this community sticks together and helps each other out. We have a special panel planned all about developers making a difference, which I hope you will join. As an inspiring example of these values, let me introduce you to a Claris FileMaker customer who leverages the platform to prevent people from losing their home and being tossed out into the streets in times of crisis. From our Claris community, please meet the Q Foundation.
We've had these incredible price inflation in rental housing and in all housing, you know, not just in America, but globally. And more and more people are being left behind. And there are terrible consequences for society when more and more people can't keep a roof over their head. It impacts all of us. Hello, um, my name is Elvis. I am Elvis, nice to meet you. Um, I live in the heart of the Castro. I'm actually like a stylist, a barber. Because of COVID-19, um, I have not been able to work. I'm literally at rock bottom and the last thing I want to do is lose my home, like where I live, you know? <laughs> so... <sighs> I found myself I couldn't do it alone. I uh, found myself needing to go into hospital for treatment and the building filed eviction where my mother was and I didn't find out about it until the uh, three-day notice had been done, the unlawful detainer, all of that stuff, and they were going to evict her in 24 hours. If it wasn't for the Q Foundation, I don't know what, I'd, what would happen to me. We are a nonprofit technology company doing rent payment processing in the social services sector. So we help people pay their rent and stay in their homes. Well, everybody has hard times, right? And it's better for society that when somebody has a hard time, they also don't lose their home. And most people, we can help them resolve it in a short period of time. People go back and they carry on and lead, you know, happy, healthy, normal, productive lives. But if they lose their housing, things change radically and their future changes. We started using FileMaker just to stay above water. It was really like, we've got to automate this. There's like, how do we get the computer to do this work? I'm extremely proud of being able to work with Q Foundation and the work that we've done there. And although he'd had a FileMaker solution for a long time, um, he'd done work on it himself with other developers over the years, he realized that with the COVID-19, that lockdown was imminent and that he needed his staff and his team to be able to work productively from home. So that's when we got the call and started working together. A bunch of people are going to lose their jobs and I was like, there's going to be a hundred thousand unemployed people in San Francisco that can't pay their rent. One of the, the big issues was that a lot of what they do is about writing checks for landlords. So we needed a way quickly to be able to automate that. So we looked around at a, an online payment gateway that we could integrate FileMaker into. And that's what we did. And because FileMaker has this great open architecture that allows uh, APIs to be integrated into it, within a matter of weeks, we had a fully automated online process. And so stuff that we built with Claris FileMaker has actually been adopted by the city and has become national standards and, you know, is changing the way social services are delivered in America. It was like a miracle, it was like a blessing, it was like, I was able to breathe, like I was able to breathe. Q Foundation has managed to one up, I want to say, uh, step up when nobody else would, and they continue to be supportive of her in a number of ways, you know, finding a new place. They've been uh, unbelievable. I will never forget this, like it's one of those things where it's like, this was the hope that I needed. I hope you enjoyed meeting the Q Foundation as a wonderful example of the dedication and diversity that makes the Claris community so special. To add his own perspective of his experience at Claris to date, now hear from Peter Nelson, our VP of Engineering. Peter, take it from here. Thanks so much, Britta, and welcome to Engage, everyone. I am Peter Nelson, Claris's Vice President of Engineering. I'm back at Claris after seven years away in the world of startups and consumer electronics. I was brought back here though to help modernize our products and our engineering organization. 
when I think about how best to do that, I'm reminded of a quote that I've liked for a long time. It's by an amateur golfer and poker player, and it goes something along the lines of, the smarter you play, the more lucky you'll be. My job here is to help make all of us, Claris and our community, as lucky as we can possibly, possibly be. And we're gonna do that within Claris, initially, by building an organization that can deliver our products faster and more in line with all of your expectations. When we look at our existing platforms and products and think about how we want to extend them, there are some truths though about the industry today that we need to respond to. Number one, we have competitors now. Number two, it's not just about databases and database-backed applications, it's about the glue that stitches everything together. And number three, SaaS is a basic, basic expectation. So to that end, we are making a number of major investments. First in our Claris platform. Our flagship product, Claris FileMaker, will continue to benefit from our investments in modernization. For example, easy authoring. Easy authoring means super, super easy onboarding and first solution creation so that anybody can get started with the FileMaker platform and can extend their first solution into deep complexity with FileMaker seamlessly. Finally, opening the platform to more modern technologies. Things like responsive layouts, JavaScript, add-on components. We will continue to invest in making sure that work done in one part of our community is easily leverageable in other places, especially by people who might not have the technical know-how to create those solutions in the first place. What does that mean? It means things like beautiful responsive charts and graphs will now just be drag and drop usable within the FileMaker product. It means things like calendar widgets are available to all of you. Creating that kind of multiplier effect is fantastic for everyone in our community. Second, Claris Connect. Our second product, um, and one that we launched just earlier this year, is gonna benefit as well in a number of ways. We know that procedural form-based applications are still important but they aren't where the action is. Instead, business process automation has to be paired with it for it to have real value. It's the interstitials between systems you use at your company already, or directing machine learning at critical sets of problems. Why does a cloud matter? A cloud matters not because it's a cloud. It's a buzzword term in the marketplace today and has been for a couple of years, but a cloud matters because it provides no installation for a consumer, no management, it should be cheaper, zero upgrade headaches. Claris, though, is in the enviable position of being able to offer a cloud solution and an on-prem solution, which gives us a real competitive advantage over any of the competitors in our space. We do know that performance, though, for our cloud needs to cross an acceptability bar, and we're working to meet that by providing a true SaaS solution, single sign-on, failover, high availability, etc. And we are very, very aware that our existing cloud offering needs to be faster, and it will be. We're making some longer investments, too. Um, to provide what our community needs, we are rebuilding the back end to everything that we offer right now to be microservice-based. We need to design a communication platform between clients and clouds that is designed for the internet, not the, not the intranet. Um, and we need to build something for our consumers that just works. This new build from the ground up approach gives us a chance to rethink what it means to be a rapid application development environment in 2020. And how do we really productize low code and no code development for all of you? I wanna reiterate, procedural form based applications are still important. They always will be. They are the center of everything we do, but they aren't where the action is today. That's in workflows, in easy AI automation, and in business process automation. It's also not just the code that's being modernized. Our teams are being modernized. To be more responsive to our community, our development organization is getting an absolute overhaul with investments in Agile. This allows us to bring more releases faster to market, better to market. By allowing you to use modern technologies of today, modern layouts, JavaScript, etc., by working to allow you to easily share content and solutions with each other through our marketplace. This is all about building leverage. We want to participants to be able to leverage the great work done by others 
in the community and create a multiplier effect that helps all of us. The space Claris occupies has become a really crowded one. We recognize that. We are fortunate to have a loyal, smart, engaged community with decades of knowledge in low-code and no-code development. And we get to leverage that community and that knowledge. And we get to modernize and grow from that established base. We hope you'll find this perspective on how we expect to grow over the next few years as compelling as we do. And now I'd like to introduce you to Srini, our Vice President of Product and Design. Srini, take it away. Wow, it's so great to be here with you all. Very good morning. Last year, Brad and I shared with you all our big aspirations for our community and what lies ahead. I'm so excited that with our combined partnership, we executed on many accomplishments. We shipped two market-leading products, FileMaker 19, Claris Connect, and the Marketplace. Let me share with you very quickly, where are we headed next? At Claris, our vision and mission is to help you, all of you, the community, to build intelligent apps, intelligent automation, driving better outcomes for all our customers worldwide. We are so fortunate to have the community representing the many different countries. Our platform embraces both citizen developers, business developers, advanced professional developers equally. And our platform is cloud smart. It means you can consume it in, in the cloud, on-prem, or in the edge. Why is this important? In today's era, every company that's around us is a software company. Whether it's a diary farm, whether it's a school, whether it's a hospital, every company is a digital company. And every employee closer to the business process is a, a developer. And the focus for every employee is to drive intelligent automation, creating better outcomes. And this is our opportunity. And this is how we're gonna go the, our combined economic value for ourselves and for our customers. And last year, we unveiled our market category, the Workplace Innovation Platform, is the convergence of the traditional low-core building custom apps with integration driven by APIs, that's the iPaaS, and now emerging non-API-centric, the manual RPA automation, building on the foundation of Cloud Smart, AI, security, and a unified marketplace. We all should be extremely proud of for creating this market for over several decades and leading this. And our products, Claris FileMaker, has been industry leading for several decades. And we launched Connect in March of 2020, and then we are working on our next gen. And all the products are built on a, a common foundation that gives you consistent security, consistent cloud smart technology, and a unified marketplace experience. I would like all of you to join me tomorrow with my team to learn more about our vision, our opportunity, and all the innovations that are coming in in all our products. And before I end, I'm super, super thrilled with my partners, Britta in marketing, Peter in engineering, Ryan in sales, under the leadership of Brad. We're all here to serve you. And we are here to realize our collective aspirations. Thank you very much. Well, hello, and welcome to my house. It is just crazy to me that after 25 years and traveling to every single DevCon before, except for one, that this year I get to invite the entire event right into my office. And I want to start by saying that I'm delighted to be back for Claris Engage in 2020, but the tone of it just doesn't sound right this year. What I really have to say instead is that I miss you. I miss you all, and so do all of us at Claris. The Claris Engage event is the biggest event of our calendar year. For me, my year doesn't start on January and end in December. My year goes from Claris uh, Engage to Claris Engage, or from DevCon to Engage. So yes, I miss you. So just last week I went and I rewatched the video that we filmed at DevCon last year about problem solvers that many of you participated in. And it's still one of the favorite things that we've ever made, in my opinion. 
it reminds me not just of the people that I look forward to seeing every year at DevCon or now at Engage, uh, but also of the traditions and the habits that we formed over a quarter of a century of getting together. I know that every year when I go to the check-in desk, Stephen Blackwell is going to be there waiting for me, and I'll get to start my DevCon by meeting with him. I know that when I walk through the lobby, Dave Knight and the guys from FimDisk are probably going to be there for me to say hello to. The next morning, I'm going to have coffee with Ernest Coe from The Proof Group, and the following afternoon, I'm going to have coffee with Martha Zink from Soliant. It's like clockwork, and it's important. It's important that we connect, we energize, we align, and at a personal and a professional level. We have the hallway meetings, we have the walking meetings, we have the evening meetings, we have the breakfast meetings. They're all very, very important to us. And to me, that connection goes to the strength of this community and its durability over time. And that's really where I want to focus uh, right now, is to talk about this community and the power it brings uh, to the world at large. So having said that, I want to talk a little bit about COVID. It's not a topic I'm particularly comfortable with as a vendor, but it's kind of the sea we're swimming in right now. And in fact, the power of the community has really come through uh, in response to the coronavirus. Three months ago, we started the COVID-19 uh, response initiative. I wanna give you a little bit of backstory on how that got kicked off and then dig in a little bit on how the community came together to deliver uh, for it. And we can even talk about some of the use cases. I vividly remember a meeting led by Brad with his exec staff in which he presented uh, a graph back in March of the progress of coronavirus cases in the world. And of course, the growth was exponential. The US was about to assume the number one position in the world in cases by country. Uh, it was very sobering. Uh, and he wanted to do something meaningful to have an impact. And so did we all. And we knew we could. We knew we could because historically, the Claris community has come together to do good works for people in need, and especially in times of crisis. So we knew there's a, a history of that. So we formed a team immediately, and it was led by Julie Sigfrinius, who runs our partner programs. And Julie and Brad, one day later on a Saturday, got together with an organization called Joint Table. You might be familiar with Joint Table. If you're not, it's an organization that was founded just about one year prior, and founded by uh, Jonathan Nicoletti, by Maka and Karnasau, and uh, Chris Kubica. And the, the purpose of Join Table was to bring companies uh, that were not-for-profits and had a need and match them to developers that were willing to donate time and effort to help them. And so we found alignment and common purpose and started defining the program. The very next day on Sunday, the team expanded and actually met with our first customer looking at the first use case already. And that was with a platform called Sense and Excess which is a smart hospital management platform that attaches IoT devices to equipment and inventory in the hospital to manage, monitor, and maintain them. And the use case we were thinking of went to hospital bed capacity for COVID patients, which was becoming limited in some very significant cities. So two days after that, we felt the program was mature enough to communicate, and we announced it via our blog. And we gave instructions for people to sign up to be volunteers or to submit projects to be worked on. And something magical really happened then. Within 24 hours, the number of volunteer developers working with JoinTable literally doubled. And within a week, they had five times the number of volunteers than they had captured during the first year of, of JoinTable's existence. As of today, there are 227 developers in 32 countries around the world that have pledged to contribute upwards of 6,800 hours per month to help people in need through the pandemic. It's just amazing. Meanwhile, the Claris COVID response team also grew. With all the projects coming in, we added Marie Normand from our partner team to be a project manager and also to help out clients and customers that needed help with licensing or deployments that had nothing to do with adding extra volunteer development. We also decided to add for capacity a couple members of the Claris Partner Council, namely uh, Mark Richmond from Skeleton Key here in the US and also uh, Jordan Watson from Solace Digital in the UK. And they have helped us to curate and, and uh, choose the projects that we can address through the Claris COVID Response Initiative. And the use cases that are covered are many. Uh, there is telemedicine, for instance. There is critical inventory management. There is contact tracing. There is remote learning. There are communications tools for hospitals and families of patients to talk when the, when the families cannot visit their loved ones in the hospital. So this is having a real material impact on real people around the world, and we just frankly thank you for your help. Now, of course, the virus is still with us, and there's a lot more work to be done. 
We continue to uh, vet incoming project requests. We are also looking at gaps in the request log to see if there are other areas that we can solve for. And we will take more volunteers. So we're extending the program through the end of the year. And if you want to volunteer, please visit our blog site where all the instructions for connecting with Join Table and connecting with us, if you want to be a volunteer or have a special project, uh, the instructions are there for you. Please join us. So the first project I want to talk about involves an app named Nimble. Nimble was conceived by a medical doctor named uh, Dr. Brian Fine from the US. And Dr. Fine is a pediatrician and a general practitioner. And he wanted to build a better way uh, to build his relationship with his clients and a better way to communicate. Uh, in his words, from a meeting we had a couple weeks ago, he wanted to bridge the gap between going to WebMD or making a visit to the doctor and building a better patient experience. Well, COVID, of course, raised the level of urgency for him in developing this, this project. Backing up, he started using FileMaker not nine months ago. He is not a professional developer, but he found in this platform, in this community, something in which he could realize his vision. And he began creating his app and got help from the community as well. For instance, Andrew Duncan gave him help in implementing SMS communications into his FileMaker app, because that ultimately is the result he wanted, the ability to manage a text communication with his patients. And he was engaged with Geist Interactive to help him build out his data model and complete the app. And the app is pretty straightforward. It offers him a list of his customers, his patients that he can manage over time, and a HIPAA compliant dialogue with them via SMS texting in the center panel of this app. And on the right panel then he can track episodes. It is episodic care with these patients. And so you can think of it in terms of projects, right? He's got customers and projects and communications. Of course, the language is patients and episodes and his texting. But the outcome for his patients was his primary goal. And for them, they have a very natural human connection to their doctor. They text him just like they would a family member or loved one or a friend. It's a lot better than going into the doctor's office, sitting in a waiting room, going in to meet a practitioner, waiting for the doctor, spending five minutes asking a couple questions, and then forgetting the one you really wanted to ask before you go home. In this way, a patient can reach out to the doctor at their leisure, ask a question, he can get back to them, and they can actually carry a conversation over the course of three to five days until he determines proper next steps for their, for their care and their diagnosis. The second project that I wanna talk about uh, is a little bit larger in scale, and that is the work that we've done with the London Ambulance Service in the great city of London, part of National Health Services of the UK. The London Ambulance Service has been a customer of ours for some time. And with the advent of the pandemic, uh, we knew that things were probably changing there. And so we connected them through the Claris COVID Response Initiative uh, because they had a specific project that needed addressed and needed addressed very urgently. Specifically, they were now faced with a situation where all of their ambulances were active at a single time, at a single moment in time. So all of their frontline workers needed to be in front of patients. And as a result, they needed to make sure that all of those ambulances and frontline workers were supplied with the necessary equipment that they needed to do their job. So the London Ambulance Service got together and determined that they needed an inventory management system that could be deployed to thousands of devices around their city and would be synchronous and communicate uh, across the city what are the levels of inventory and where are the locations for that inventory for their workers. So we connected London Ambulance Service with Solace Digital our partner in the UK. And Jordan Watson and his team really rose to the occasion. They deployed seven members of their com company uh, doing nights and weekends for two weeks, working with five members of the London Ambulance Service to, in an agile way, build out a solution. Uh, they had stand-ups every morning, they were iterating as they want, and they were deployed in two weeks. And the solution is remarkable. It's deployed on upwards of 4,000 machines around the city, it's on iPads in the clinics with technicians who can use it to find whether they've got adequate inventory supplies to do their work from day to day. It's available via iPhone for their ambulance workers who are driving about to make withdrawals from the inventory to know exactly what's on the ambulance trucks and know where they can go to get refills on their inventory. And then finally, from a central location, the city can also manage and monitor the inventory levels across uh, the city. And they can see where there are low inventory levels that need addressing, whether they order more uh, product or whether they move inventory around the city. Their goal is to make sure they have the right equipment in the right place for the right people at the right time under amazing, amazing duress. And Solus Digital and London Ambulance Service really came through to build a solution to help them get it done.
I'd like to share this, this quote, this response from Stuart Crichton, who is the Chief Clinical Information Officer at the London Ambulance Service. And it goes to say some very kind words about the great work that Solace Digital did to come through for them in this time of crisis. And it highlights two things that I think are really important, just how fast they were able to respond and get the work done, and as well, what the bottom line was. It's about better services for the patients of the City of London. Another quote that I'd like to share by Stuart that jumped out at me in a meeting we had with them just a few weeks ago was that COVID accelerated some mandates. I think it's beautifully understated, <laughs> but it goes to what's happening here and all the projects that we're working on. The pandemic is really a forcing function for digital transformation. If you think about what Dr. Fine was able to do, he's transforming the experience of being a patient and how they communicate with their doctor. If we think about what London Ambulance Service and Solace were able to do, it's about transforming the availability of data so they can be responsive and executing on their ambulance services. All of our projects have some element of this. And this notion of being a forcing function for digital transformation applies to for-profit business just like it does to these works that we're doing that, that help make the world a better place. In fact, just two weeks ago, I was watching a webinar uh, hosted by McKinsey and Company Corporation, and in there, a data point stuck out for me. In a survey of executives across a variety of industries and companies, uh, many of them, uh, it came out that 90% of the executives know that the COVID pandemic is going to fundamentally change the way that they do business. Only 21% of them felt they were ready to respond. Much like the gap that Brad talked about earlier in his presentation, the demand gap for talent to develop applications, there's a gap right now in responding to this pandemic, but it is a forcing function that needs addressed. And once again, I think low-code platforms like the Claris platform can help address that gap. Why is that? Well, we've just seen two examples. Our platform helps pro developers be more productive. Solus Digital is able to deliver in a sprint in very short amount of time, a very complex project that's now in use by thousands of users across thousands of devices in the city of London. In our platform also, for the rest of us, enables us to participate in the creation of solutions. Like Dr. Fine. He was able to conceive of an idea, come and learn our platform, and start building an app to prove the concept for himself. Our vision has always been to deliver advanced technologies and make them accessible to everyone pro-coders, and the rest of us alike. In our North Star, our focus with our platform and the way we do business is to offer the only path to deliver the modern custom apps that our customers require and need, particularly now, using the platform that we already know, that we've invested in for 30 years together. Speaking of the platform, tomorrow we have a very exciting keynote session led by Srini Gurupu and the product teams to talk about the industry, the technologies that we're working with, and their vision moving forward for the platform. And it will be a not-miss session, so I hope you'll join us there. And then for the rest of the event, of course, this is our first virtual event. And we constructed it with some intention. One was we wanted to preserve the technical session content uh, that we have every year at DevCon, uh, but we wanted to do that in a way that you could access it for free at your leisure through Claris Academy, where we will have a library of great sessions, and we really thank all the speakers for providing that content. During these next two days, what we really wanted to accomplish, though, was retaining that sense of communication, that dialogue that we have with each other and with thought leaders uh, in the community. And so we arranged for a series of panel discussions. And those cover a gamut of topics. We have the essentials that we cover every year, performance, security, and design. Uh, we also have under the hood sessions from our product teams to talk about Connect and FileMaker in more detail. We've got some thought leadership about the meaning of FileMaker 19. How do we use JavaScript to extend the platform and how do we use add-ons to extend new capabilities to even citizen developers like Dr. Fine? Um, and then further, we have some great sessions on developers doing great works in the world. We have a special panel of CXOs who have built multi-million dollar companies and leveraged the Claris platform strategically to get there. And I want to know how they think about it, not as a developer, but as somebody who's creating real value in a marketplace. And we're going to finish up tomorrow with a really interesting panel uh, that will include uh, Brad Freitag from our company, as well as two enterprise customers and a leading partner from our community to talk about their outlook on the application of low code in business today and where it's going. So we think we have an exciting lineup that captures the communications that we would have normally in an in, a in person DevCon. And we hope that you'll enjoy the experience with us uh, on this journey. Finally, I just want to say, I do miss you, and I hope that we get to get back together next year. But for the next two days, let's have a fantastic Claris Engage for 2020.
I'm excited for what's in store for you over the next two days at Gage. We have a series of live panel discussions with industry hot topics. We encourage you to engage in these discussions or visit the Claris Community website to view the sessions on demand and collaborate with the community. Thank you.